want to do another video because something very exciting happened in this neighborhood. Uh, but first of all, even though I don't live there, yes. So for all my Scottish friends in the VC, uh, hopefully you're feeling the same way as I am about uh, Scotland's independence. But uh, we got a vote coming up and it sounds like things are very, uh, very heated over there in the UK. Anyway, uh, this is a video about, like I said, it's something very exciting happened in our neighborhood. A new record store opened up. Uh, a place is called Tin Dog Records. And uh, it is located in Beloit, Wisconsin. Uh, a very nice part of town, right on State Street there. A number of nice little shops and, uh, and uh, bagel places and coffee shops, cafes, whatever you want to call them. Just right in that area. Uh, anyway, it's a very nice neighborhood. Um, they have been wrestling with the idea of opening this store for quite a while. I've been following them on Facebook. And apparently there have been some issues with construction and it taking a long time. And uh, uh, but anyway, they finally they finally opened. Um, they didn't. This isn't their official grand opening, but they finally opened their doors. And uh, I was there. I saw a notice on Facebook that they were going to be open on on uh, Friday morning. So I shot up there Friday morning, and uh, and checked them out and met the owners. John, Amanda, hello. It was very nice talking to you. Uh, I probably took up more of your time <laughs> than, than you wanted, but it was very nice to get to know you and very nice to talk to you, find out uh, how things are going and what your plans are for the store and everything. Uh, very, very cool. So again, Tin Dog Records in Beloit, Wisconsin. And if you are ever in this area, um, you should check them out. Uh, fantastic store. I will be, uh, in case it wasn't obvious from something I said a little bit earlier, I will be doing a, uh, a more in-depth video about Tin Dog when they have their official grand opening. But I was sort of talking to the owners about that and we, we kind of agreed that uh, because the store wasn't quite where they wanted it to be at this point, they uh, they would rather have me hold off until they were ready. So I'm totally cool with that. They, uh, they did allow me to take a few shots inside and uh, I'll, I'll you know put up a couple of them here just to give you a feel for what the store is like uh, very cool place uh, a giant wall of brand new records and uh, lots of bins of, of uh, used records with some some pretty deep stock um, uh, I'll let me show you a little bit of what I saw there when I was digging So yeah, so some pretty cool stuff there. I didn't, uh, I didn't actually buy all of those records. I flipped through just there. Um, that would have been, <laughs> I would have broken the bank for sure. But I do have some finds here to show you. Found some good records there. Some of which you saw as I flipped through the bins there. Um, this one, Athens, Inside Out, Athens, Georgia, Inside Out. Uh, John Tambroni showed this somewhat recently in a video. I've been wanting to get this for quite a while. It's on IRS Records. Um, bands like R.E.M. and Love Tractor and Pylon and that sort of thing. Um, I, I kind of passed on that when it first came out, but uh, 
there have been a number of things recently that have sparked my interest again. I have been wanting a copy of this for quite some time. I have, this is uh, Aldi Miola, John McLaughlin, and Paco Di Lucia. <laughs> Paco Di Lucia. Uh, Friday night in San Francisco. I have been wanting to get this for quite a while. Um, haven't been able to find it in decent enough shape. Um, I have Passion, Grace, and Fire, which is another fantastic collaboration between these guys. Um, absolutely amazing guitar summit. Uh, if you are into guitar, especially acoustic guitar, maybe you're into the kind of stuff that uh, uh, Rodrigo and Gabriela have done, you definitely need to check this stuff out. Maybe you already know about it. If you do, you know how fantastic it is. Uh, I found a 12-inch single there for Human Behavior from Bjork. This is the first song from her album debut. Um, I love that cover. And uh, I, I really like anything I can pick up by Bjork. So this is a pretty cool find. 12-inch single for Human Behavior. I think it's just four different mixes. Yeah, four different mixes of the song on there. Pretty cool. Um, also, in the 12-inch single department, Alive and Kicking. This is a single from Once Upon a Time. The B-side is Up on the Catwalk, a live version from Glasgow of Up on the Catwalk. Uh, from the album before that, Sparkle in the Rain. So, pretty happy to find that. I'm a big Simple Minds fan. Uh, Killing Joke's first album. Very, very happy to find this. Killing Joke's first album. Their debut. Um, I had, like, a month or two ago, a couple months ago, uh, I was up in Milwaukee with Blake, and I found a copy of this that was actually a little, little bit more than they were asking for at Tin Dog, but um, it was not in very good shape. It was kind of rough. So I'm very pleased to find this one. It's in at least VG plus condition, if not better. Uh, big Van, Van Morrison fan. I was very excited to find Enlightenment, which is his uh, album from 1990. You know, you start to get into the late 80s and early 90s, and uh, vinyl, original vinyls, uh, harder to come by. Um, they just weren't making as much of it because they had phased out in favor of CDs in the late 80s. So, Enlightenment, Van Morrison, very happy to add that to the collection. 10,000 Maniacs, The Wishing Chair. Not their most popular album, or even their best, I guess I would say. But um, I, have, I have a lot of the, like I have um, In My Tribe and Blind Man Zoo and uh, Our Time in Eden, that sort of thing. Um, but I don't have this one. And so I, you know, I decided I was going to pick that thing up and, you know, it wasn't, didn't set me back that much to do it. Um, another album I'm very, very excited to find here. Uh, Milwaukee, represent uh, Violent Femmes their second album called Hollow Ground, Hollowed Ground. Um, I have, uh, well, actually at this point now, I have all four of the first uh, Violent Femmes albums, which I believe are the best Violent Femmes albums. But uh, of those first four albums, I did not have Hollowed Ground, and I could not find a copy of Hollowed Ground on vinyl. Um, so I, up at Tin Dog, they had uh, all four of the Violent Femmes albums that I'm talking about. That was one of them, so I was happy to find that. This was a prize find. A compilation, Bauhaus compilation, 1979 to 1983. Uh, double album, Gatefold. Very, very happy to find that. Original inner sleeves in there. Very, very pleased with that. Um, they had a bunch of Bauhaus there. Not a ton, but three or four Bauhaus records. And I saw this, and I just immediately nabbed it. I think that was probably the most expensive thing in my batch here. Uh, but very, very worth it. Uh, that was all I picked up on uh, that run. And then I left the store, and I uh, immediately uh, uh, posted something on Facebook about the store. And then also contacted Blake, my friend Blake. And uh, he ran up there, and I had other errands to run, and so I was running all over town. He ran up there, 
uh, picked up a bunch of stuff for himself. Um, I'll put a link to his video below this one so that you can uh, check out his finds if you want to. Um, he mentioned, I saw a, uh, uh, a an album, I saw this album really, from uh, the Jams, the History of the Jams, and I, I just sort of flipped past it, and I actually thought, as soon as I saw it, I thought it was the same thing as a 12-inch single that I have from the Time Lords. I don't know why, because obviously that's not the most prominent thing on here, but uh, I thought it was a 12-inch single that I already had. So I just kept going. And then when he came over later on, and we were talking about some of the records and everything, he was like, I'm surprised you didn't pick that up. Uh, basically what it is, the history of the jams, uh, Justified Ancients of Moo Moo, <laughs> also known as the Time Lords, also known as the KLF, and on and on and on, various different names. Uh, this is a collection of their music. Not, not necessarily all KLF stuff. Um, actually, I think this was all prior to them naming themselves KLF or the KLF. Uh, but uh, a little collection on TVT Records, History of the Jams. Uh, stuff leading up to uh, KLF, I believe. I actually, uh, after our, the conversation, in case it wasn't obvious, after the conversation that I had with Blake, I ran back up there and picked that up. Uh, unfortunately, in the pouring rain. But it was okay. It was okay. So, if you find yourself in the Beloit, Wisconsin area, or anywhere in southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, make a stop at Tin Dog Records. Um... I will be talking more about them in the future, I'm sure. Uh, and again, they have given me permission to come and shoot some video for their grand opening when that happens. So I'm looking forward to doing that, and I appreciate the honor. Um, and that's about it. Very exciting! <laughs>